We've been talking about consumer and producer surplus and how to measure it. When a consumer is willing to pay $100 for something, but only has to pay $10, she gets $90 of consumer surplus. When a firm can sell a good at a price higher than the cost, they get a surplus. One real world application where surplus plays an important role is for concert tickets. In 2016, the British singer Adele went on a concert tour for her album 25. Every show sold out. The reason was that Adele was an incredibly popular singer. She came out with an album 21 in 2011 that was loaded with hit songs. Then fans had to wait four years for her next album. When it finally came out, fans were desperate to see her live. And Adele wanted her fans to be happy. She set prices for her tickets as low as $40. Even the best seats only cost $150. Now these prices may seem high, but keep in mind that many of her fans would have gladly paid hundreds if not thousands of dollars to see her show. This means that by pricing her tickets so low, Adele was giving her fans a gift, the gift of consumer surplus. The fans lucky enough to get tickets would get to see her live and derive huge amounts of consumer surplus in the process. Or at least, that's how it was supposed to work. Most fans were lucky enough to get a ticket off Adele's website. Instead, they had to go to online markets like StubHub, where tickets could go for as much as $1,500. Where do these tickets come from? Sometimes it's from a fan who bought a ticket then realized he couldn't go. But often, it's from professional ticket scalpers. Professional scalpers are businesses that buy tickets at face value, then resell them to people willing to pay a lot more. So a ticket scalping business would buy tons of Adele's tickets for $40. Then, knowing how much people are willing to pay to see her sing, would resell the tickets on StubHub for as much as $1,500. That means that instead of Adele's fans getting the surplus, or Adele herself, the surplus ends up going to these businessmen. As you can imagine, a lot of people find this unfair. Adele tried her best to stop it. She and her team used computer software to try to identify known ticket scalpers and prevent them from buying her tickets. But this only partially solves the problem. These scalpers just created new accounts that went undetected and still bought lots of the tickets. So Adele created a ton of surplus by going on tour, but that surplus accumulated not just to her fans, but to ticket scalpers as well. It didn't used to be this way. Before the internet, sites like StubHub didn't exist. So if you were a scalper and you bought 100 tickets, it'd be really hard to find 100 Adele fans to resell them to. StubHub solved that, and in doing so, made professional scalping more lucrative. Back in the 1960s, for example, people had to line up, sometimes for days, to get a concert ticket. This is a picture of people in line to see the Beatles at the Hollywood Bowl in 1964. This long line is another way to see how high consumer surplus is. If consumer surplus was zero, consumers wouldn't be willing to pay the ticket price and waste their time in line. Only if there was consumer surplus would fans be willing to take the time to wait in line. The fact that these Beatles fans are willing to spend so much time in line to get tickets means the value of seeing the Beatles in concert must have been a lot higher than just the price of admission. That is, this long line illustrates the presence of consumer surplus. The point of this example is that surplus isn't some abstract concept in economics. It's very real, and it drives how concert tickets are sold, to give one example.